why does the Catholic Church baptize infants instead of waiting till they're old enough to understand the faith? Why do Catholics baptize infants? Great question. Well, first things first, baptism is the first sacrament all Christians receive. It's the first step towards full membership in the body of Christ. The other two steps are confirmation and Eucharist, and together these three are known as the sacraments of initiation. Now, we're not talking about hazing rituals here, but rather the building blocks for every Christian life. The faithful are born anew by baptism, strengthened by the sacrament of confirmation, and receive in the Eucharist the food of eternal life. By means of these sacraments of Christian initiation, they thus receive in increasing measure the treasures of the divine life. Not only is baptism an initiation into the faith community, it also frees us from sin. You see, all of us are born with what we call the stain of original sin. And baptism cleanses us of that stain, sort of like a Windex for the soul. So baptism isn't just kind of a big deal, it's a very big deal. Because all of us, no matter our age, are in need of salvation. And God offers us this completely free gift in the grace of baptism. Children also have need of the new birth in baptism, to be freed from the power of darkness and brought into the realm of the freedom of the children of God to which all people are called. It's also important to know that infant baptism is not a new phenomenon. It's been around since the time of the early Christian communities when entire families would be baptized together, both adults and children. But even before that, baptism makes its debut at the hands of the guy who's got it in his name, John the Baptist. And he was a little humbled by one of the guys he happened to baptize. Indeed, it was Jesus who really emphasized the importance of baptism when, before he ascended into heaven, he instructed his apostles, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. We are all called to be disciples, members of an enormous Christian community. So when an infant is baptized, it's not their decision, obviously. A baby is baptized into the faith of the community, which means it's up to us to pass on our faith to that child. So, who exactly can be baptized? Anyone. Well, that's not exactly true. There's no double dipping in baptism. Once you've been baptized, you can't go back for seconds, even if you were baptized initially in another faith tradition. Baptism imprints on the soul an indelible spiritual sign, the character, which consecrates the baptized person for Christian worship. Because of the character, baptism cannot be repeated. When we celebrate the sacrament of baptism, there are a few key ingredients needed water, there's no such thing as a dry baptism, oil for anointing, which symbolizes the gift of the Holy Spirit, a candle signifying that the newly baptized has been enlightened by Christ and will now be a light for the world, a white garment, which represents being newly washed of sin and putting on Christ, and you'll also need a priest or deacon, parents, godparents, and of course the baby. After a formal blessing of the water, all those present proclaim their faith, speaking for the infant who probably isn't up to talking just yet. And then water is poured over the baby's forehead three times while the priest or deacon declares, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The ceremony concludes with prayers that accompany the oil, the candle, and the white garment. Now all of that is for a full-on church celebration of the sacrament of baptism. But in an emergency, anyone can baptize anywhere. You don't need a priest or a deacon or even all of those props. The bare minimum is just plain old water and the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But that's really just for use in an emergency, or what the church usually calls in danger of death. This trimmed down version is not intended for use by grandparents who are babysitting their as yet unbaptized but otherwise healthy grandchild. Okay, let's get to some common misconceptions about baptism. 
First is that the baby's godparents have to be married to each other. That's not true. Though it often happens that they are married to each other, there's nothing that says that they can't be married to other people or even be single. Another misconception is that Catholics only baptize babies. Nope. Adult baptism is alive and well in the Catholic Church. The rite of Christian initiation for adults, more commonly referred to as RCIA, is exactly what it sounds like, a program for adults who want to become Catholic. The process culminates with baptism usually held during the Easter Vigil service, a time when all of us in the faith community renew our baptismal commitment to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. But you don't have to wait for Easter to do that. You do it every time you step into a church and bless yourself with holy water. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Remember, even though you can only celebrate the sacrament of baptism once in your life, it's something to be lived out every day. We are reborn in Christ and must go into the world and live His Word as children of God. Thank you.